Hello there. You're welcome to CNR Extra on City TV. My name is Manatu Fuobwating. Coming up. Interior Minister and the Inspector General of Police Service have vowed to ensure perpetrators behind killings of security guards in the Upper West Region are apprehended. The Ghana Police Service is in control of the situation. They, led by the IGP and the POMAP, would investigate. Also, Gomua East District Assembly bans land guard activities and digging fees charges. In collaboration with the chiefs and elders of the district, have, with immediate effect, banned all land guard activities and digging fees in court. Still to come, four persons, a mother and her three children drowned in a dike in La Cle Vicope in the Petri South municipality of the Volta region. The situation I find myself now, although it's not all that easy to take, but as a man, I'm trying to manage the situation on the ground. And later, about 40 drivers convicted and fined under CTTV's war against the discipline campaign. According to my uncle, he said usually he tips them like what's called a trauma there for where, for where they are standing. Oh, no, they are five cities now. Yeah, based on where they are. It's a five cities. But stay with us for the details of these stories and some others. But before we bring that to you, we'd like to remind you that the show is an interactive one. And so we'd like to hear from you via the WhatsApp number 0550-585832. You can also join the feed, which is live on Facebook at City TV, also on Twitter at City TV GH. In studio with me is Philip Nilate. Good morning, Philip. Good morning. Not too far. I trust you well. I'm doing well. And you? I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. All right, let's bring the show on um, board and let's start from the Upper West Region where recent uh, killings have gotten the IGP and the Minister for the Interior to move from the capital, Accra, to Wa. Minister for the Interior, Honorable Ambrose Derry, and the Inspector General of Police IGP, Dr. George Okufo Dampari, have paid an emergency visit to Wa in the Upper West Region in connection with the killing of some private security men in the town. Now, the visit is to assess the security situation in the town and to update the police and other stakeholders in the town on security arrangements to restore peace in Wa and the region at large. City News' Latif Mahama has more in the following report. First to arrive in the region was the Interior Minister, Honorable Ambrose Derry, who held closed-door meeting with the Regional Security Council. He was accompanied by members of the Security Council to the Palace of the Overlord of the Wala Traditional Area, where he assured him of the government's commitment to ensuring peace and security in war. I think that my visit here was one of reassurance that the security agencies, and in this case especially, the lead security agency, the Ghana Police Service, is in control of the situation. They, led by the IGP and the POMAP, would investigate whatever has happened in the past. And all I'm assuring the one now is that the security agencies so far are up to the task and we believe and we support them to do their work. It is their domain of investigating crime and I believe that the last two days you in WA have really observed that the police have taken steps to, as it were, enhance the security of the area. I believe all of you are more confident. Now, as I said, the trend was that any time there was a heavy rain, after that there was an occurrence. I want to believe that so far is the hard work of the police. But this is purely police activity. The Director General of Police is in town. The IGP will come into town 
he would come and be in control and uh, the indication is that he's likely also to come and, and brief the, the, the parliament chief as to what is happening. For me, express on behalf of the president and the people of Ghana our condolences to all families who have lost loved ones and that are uh, at all with them now and that we will do anything possible to support the requisite agencies, police, immigration, dealing with foreigners and the rest of them. The overlord of the Wala traditional area, now Hussein Isaidu Pilpo the fourth, expressed satisfaction about government's steps so far to restore peace in the Wala township. Wala well, and for that matter, the Upper West region is in a state of mourning. We appreciate the actions from headquarters to help stem the tide of what are now obvious ritual killings in the Wa municipality. When you realized the killings were getting one too many, you sent a team of investigators to support the criminal investigation department within the police service in the region. When again, the police service in the region got overwhelmed by the increasing spate of killings, you sent more men to be part the number of your men on the ground. Admittedly, however, upon hindsight, one can describe the actions not only as knee-jerk reactions, but also as too little, too late. Next to arrive was the Inspector General of the Ghana Police Service, George Ekufu Dampare, who also held a meeting with the Upper West Regional Minister. He inspected some police duty posts in the Wa Township before meeting a mini deborah of chiefs at the palace of Nafusei Nusei Dupelipo IV. The IGP did not allow the media during his interaction with the chiefs. However, in an interaction with a local search team, he assured the public that his men will apprehend the perpetrators of the killing that claimed 10 lives so far. We have decided to bring more people because we are the lead security agency when it comes to internal security. So already every security agency is involved in this exercise we are doing. But as a lead agency, we take full command and responsibility and make sure that we deepen it to the level that will keep you so safe. That's why you could see all the motorbikes, all the personnel, and the undercover special intelligence teams, the undercover special investigation teams working day and night with most of you in the communities. Now some of you have seen some of them dressed as if they work in the market, as if they work at the shops, all towards getting to the bottom of this matter. And have you seen the results we are making? Have you seen all the things and the, how we have worked with you as search parties into the bushes, into the areas, and the results we are getting? For five days, I have not slept, my teams have not slept as we mobilize and come down here to deal with the matter. And yesterday when I was sleeping, it was almost 3 a.m. and I just have to get up at 5 and come here. That demonstrates how committed we are in making sure that we live up to our mandate of maintaining law and order and protecting life and property. Some residents of WA expressed satisfaction about the visit, but said the police have to be swift with their investigations. And I'm very happy to see the visit of the ITP. And today, for the past two days now, we are seeing things like this are now moving down. And at first, we were not happy for it at all, because the way things were going on. And even when they buried, like they buried the people, it's around our side. So it makes us feel uncomfortable even going to the house. So by the moment, we are very glad to see as the uh, IGP is around. And you know, we are hoping that he's going to make it. Like, now what is going on now is, we are, like, for the past days, we have been hearing some things about killing, killing, killing. But for now, they are, you know that we are going to help the uh, IGP, the Commander-in-Chief of War, to look for the people that, that is going on doing their killing there. So now, for now, they are, 
We are impressed. Uh, my impression about the visit of the IGP to the Upper West region is that it will give the people of the region a kind of encouragement that his visit will, brought, uh, will bring uh, this killing uh, in the Upper West region to a stop because you see the kind of policemen that are in the region to help other policemen uh, in the region as far as these operations or killing is concerned. Meanwhile, City News sources at the Upper West Regional Police Command suggest that one suspect has been arrested in connection with the killing. The suspect, Kankani Adongo, is reported to have been busted by a local search team in his hideout at Bamaho, a suburb of Wa. What we know now currently regarding this matter, as mentioned by Latif, is that one suspect has been arrested and the police has also gone ahead mm. to place a bounty mm. uh, on the heads of persons who are suspected to be behind these killings. But uh, we seem to have a knack for employing um, people who are well advanced in age as uh, security guards. Um, we seem to have a taste for employing pensioners. Yes to man our gates and I, I, I get worried because I mean one they may not be as strong as they were in their youthful days uh, two what kind of training were they, have, given? Uh, were they given and often you see that people yeah. who are sort of they want to uh, make ends meet you see that they end time to exactly. these um, kind of uh, work jobs, yeah, yeah. a lot of them most mm. of them I can say so the, the the question you also ask is that what kind of training so if they are being given um, adequate training to ensure that whatever um, they find that they say that they're okay, they are curious about or this doesn't sit right with them, they'll be able to tip off or they'll be able to, to give an information to the various security agencies, i.e. the police or mm. the BNI or the NIB as of now, uh, yeah. to speak to them and ask them that, okay, fine, so this is the suspicious person I have seen in the community and I don't think it's right. Mm. But also, I think another body was found yesterday. Yes. Uh, 19th, mm -hmm. yes. So I would say that the police is doing well. Yeah. The IGP being in that particular exactly. community even tells you that... Gives some confidence. Exactly, confidence. Yeah. And the interior minister also went well, there yeah, as mistake. well. Yeah. yeah. So I think that mm. uh, they are getting some, they're bringing some closure to the yeah. situation. So this, this will also bring some peace and orderliness mm. in the Wa Township as well. Very informative, the presence of the IGP and that of the Minister for the Interior. But then uh, also we would like to commend the police for the investigations mm. and picking up a suspect. I mean, if it's one random, two, not so, but I mean, 10 or nine yeah. security, private security guards in the past nine months, it's quite uh, worrying. Troubling. Exactly. And so maybe the police should expedite the investigation some more and draw a pattern, right? It will help them identify the persons or even not necessarily the persons, but the motive behind uh, the killings. Could this just be a reprisal attack? Could it be a serial killer on the loose? Or could it just be a mere coincidence that whoever is being attacked uh, happens to be mm. a security mm. guard. I'm sure police investigations will reveal a pattern and following the same pattern, they can come up with the motive and then, of course, move in to pick and up the suspects. And also the residents the in the area should not um, keep information to, to themselves. themselves. Very they, important. They the interior minister yes. did mention that yes, yesterday. Because you would notice that mm. in a particular setting where this is happening, someone mm. sitting somewhere may have seen someone doing something exactly. and uh, that yeah. can even lead to um mm. and information and the person can also be gave some information to exactly the and let's not take the laws into final, our yes. hands i mean it's possible you may see somebody not from the area mm. behave in a particular way probably just as the igp mentioned maybe an undercover police mm. trying to pick up information so you do not attack such a person rather report the activities of the person to the authorities that be uh, hearing the ghana police service and then also we had the, the walana Yes. also asking for some illumination in the community mm. i mean he says that most of the areas do not have the street lights exactly and so it makes it easy for i think we made mention of it yesterday uh, as well so that if the place has been we it have some well street lights yes mm. street lights around at least you would you be able to see from mm. afar what is happening at a particular place that the security officers can also rush there we know of the over 300 security officers mm. or the police officers yes. that are augmenting the effort of the police the officers. Police command. Yes, yeah. I think so, so. All right, let's move into some rather sad story where a mother and her three children have met their untimely death uh, by drowning in the Ketu municipality.
Now four persons, a mother and her three children, have perished after drowning in a dike allegedly created in a lagoon by a salt mining company in Laklavikofa in the Sketu South municipality of the Volta region. Residents say they want authorities to ensure safety measures are followed by the company to prevent future occurrences. They, however, calling on the mining company to put safety signposts along the lagoon. City News' Desmond Selassiago has more. Residents in Laklevikofe in the Ketu South Municipality of the Volta region were on Saturday 17 September 2022 thrown into a state of shock and mourning after a family of five who went fishing along the lagoon in the enclave got drowned with the man of the family being the sole survivor. The deceased, a woman in her late 30s and her three children aged between 9 and 14, all perished after trying to save one of the children who fell into a dike created by a salt mining company. 7C Salt Mining Limited. The dike, which is about 12 feet, has now become a danger zone for residents here who are fisher folks. Assembly member for the area, Victor Ayaku, has been speaking to City News. According to him, activities of the salt mining company are putting them at a disadvantage. He says, residents who are fisher folks are now living in fear as they can no longer go fishing. He also noted that the community is not benefiting from the activities of the company. As I speak, this big electoral area, back to what we say, we don't have a public toilet. I keep crying as an assembly member. We need public toilet, we need public nothing. So I don't know over the years that this company is here operating. I don't know what developments can they show. I don't know that they can show us that this is the development they are doing for us. This is what we are getting from the operations. But still, they keep exploring our places and taking the livelihood needs from our people. The surviving father also spoke to City News and appealed to government to come to their aid to ensure that the community members continue their activities. He said the situation has not been easy for him, but he is receiving support from the community. The situation I find myself now, although it's not all that easy to take, but as a man, I'm trying to manage the situation on the ground by the help of my other colleagues from the area. They are giving me a lot of uh, advice and then other supports. So as I'm speaking now, I'm all that uh, healthy. I can say that I'm healthy to me. I'm healthy as I'm seeing my body for now. My humble appeal to the government now, they must come to the aid of the people of the area, especially the Lankajukoba community, because the community is dominated with people who normally fish around this area. And the dark, the one that they that close to the community itself, they have to close that one, and the other one they leave the other one so that the the people of the community can have enough space to do their fishing work. Because a majority of the community folks are involved in this particular fishing uh, uh, job over here. So when the company can, uh, the government want to do it now, they should enforce the company to close the first one that they that close to the community they should close that one and leave the other one which is not close to the the, the the community some residents have also been speaking to city news and say the company must follow rules to prevent such occurrences how can you create a dark here why not what create a dark create a dark in your own territory but according to what you have been hearing what they should leave what 20 kilometers before they create their dark and the community and the Jason. The Jason should be what? 20 kilometers away. But look at where the dark is being created and look at what the community. All this area is what? Our own vast area for fishing. If you see it now, can you what? Demarcate or see any demarcation over there that there is a big dark over there? No, you can see it. As you, as you can all see, you can see it. So it is, it is affecting the whole community where we have been fishing and what? Mining our salt. They've taken that one away from, from us. Look at it. What is happening over there is very, very serious. All effort that we are doing, trying to correct things, is a total fiasco. What shall we do? The government should help us. That's not the first time they went fishing over there. They've been going, but unfortunately that day, what actually transpired was... You know, their mom was at the forefront. So one of the kids went ahead of the mom. He's kidded. So the mom wanted to rescue him. And then the mom also slipped inside. 
Then another one, there were four. Another one also wanted to rescue the mom. Then he also entered. Then the fourth person also from behind wanted to rescue. They all got drowned. Fortunately, their father, the former assemblyman, was at the other side of the water. That is what he himself wanted to dash forward. But fortunately, somebody was there to rescue him. Otherwise, he would have also drowned. Meanwhile, public relations officer of the Seven Seas Mining Limited, Adam Smensa, says the company is not to be blamed for the lives lost. He, however, noted that the company is putting measures in place to put up signposts warning residents of the dike. They are around the dike and inside the dike, there are fish ponds all over the place belonging to some individuals. So now the water level is very, very, very high because we are also pumping water from the sea into the lagoon. And the same lagoon is also taking flood water from the, the, from the communities. You get understanding. So the level of the water in the lagoon now is very high. It's not a place where one, I mean, should be taking a children to. Definitely if you're going there with your children, you're exposing them to danger. We had a, a meeting with some guys to erect it today. And this, unfortunately, this thing happened on Saturday. So as I'm speaking with you now, right from morning, morning they started putting the, the, the signposts all over. It is an area which we cannot uh, put anything like hard wire in order to prevent people from coming. Definitely, uh, all the people around the area are all fisher, fisher, fishermen. They will always go and fish. What we need to do is to mount a very uh, educative museum so that uh, they will be aware of the dangers uh, around the lagoon. That is the only thing we can do to prevent this sort of things from happening. Municipal Chief Executive for the Ketuza Municipality, Maxwell Lugudo, noted that. The residents will be protected to ensure they go about their normal daily activities. He also said intensive measures will be put in place to educate residents on the dangers along the lagoon. We ask them to put some kind of fencing, but it's a very large, a very vast area. And the truth is, uh, our people, that is their fishing community, that the, they do fishing. So we ask the, 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 the company, we ask them long time, not before uh, what is happening. Actually, they say they started doing it, and I've even seen some sign that they started putting the sign there, where the places that are deep, before the sad issue happened. We have to intensify the education to let the people know where the dikes are. Even if they can see it, sometimes you can see it, but you might not know, because of the water level, you might not know that there, there is a kind of a, 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 a dangerous place there. So we're putting all those in, uh, uh, inscriptions. Sometimes you can put those things there. If the person, excuse me, doesn't know how to read, he might not know or she might not know that this place is what. But we'll put a sign to show that it's, very, uh, that it's a dangerous place. Apart from that, we'll intensify the education. As I'm talking to you now, I'm meeting the chiefs and the, the youth of the area. Very unfortunate situation there, but um, brings to the fore, of course, uh, the issue of occupational safety and, of course, um, persons being held accountable or responsible for their actions or inactions. Are we just going to do the typical Ghana Jaimaninka mm -hmm. thing or we are going to hold somebody accountable, accountable for, this. for the loss of life? These are, I mean, what, four lives that have just been lost? Mm -hmm. Just like, and you remember somewhere in July, there was a similar issue around this same Lakle Bikope area. So I, I think that mm. the management of the company, the Seven Seas mm. company, must take charge and ensure that the place is fenced. From what the MC said, they've asked them to fence the place for a very long time. Right. And this is where they've been mining salt. It's close to the community. When you go to Pamblos, before you get access to the Pamblos compound or to mm. that particular place, security officers would have to check you, ask what you are going to do there and all that before you get access to the enclave. Yeah. So why why don't you do this and get saved lives? Exactly. There's four human beings that mm. are gone, perished their lives like that. Exactly. And if this is going to continue, the residents or the community members are scared and they are saying that the necessary measures must be put in place. If you are supposed mm. to put the security post 
emergency or this is a warning, a warning or this one. They will definitely be able to read. And you exactly. should get men on the ground to ensure that nobody crosses the line to that particular place because it's a danger zone. So I think that the, 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 the immediate thing must be done. The right thing must be done immediately. Proper investigations exactly. must be done. We yeah. should not leave it uh, as it is because the company clearly will deny mm -hmm. uh, um, and also want to because i've read somewhere that they're saying it's not their dike yes. but rather a pond created by somebody for whatever purpose we are not sure but you see this is where the people get their livelihood this is where they fish to sustain themselves and others so you cannot stop them from going there best thing to do is to erect the signposts the danger signs and ensure some protection and safety around them and, but go, then, and course, go on with the fencing as well ex exactly. they should fence the place but then of course possible. the investigations must be carried out and whoever is found culpable must be brought to book we we, we take too many things for granted exactly. in, in this country let's take you to Gomwa East in the central region where another worrying issue the issue of langardism although outlawed uh, by our constitution uh, seems to be gaining grounds. Well, the assembly, that, uh, the Gomwa East Assembly says, uh, henceforth, it's placed a ban on the activities of land guards in the area. Gomwa East District Assembly says it has banned land guard activities and the demand for digging fees by indigents from developers. The move, among other measures, is targeted at eliminating the menace of land guard activities within the enclave to give developers a peace of mind. A Central Regional Correspondent Calvis Tete has more in the following report. The decision to ban the demand and payment of digging fees according to the Gomwa East District Assembly was arrived at after a meeting between the District Security Council and the traditional leaders in the district. According to Solomon Dakokwam, there have been series of complaints from residents and developers of harassment from land guards who in most cases demand digging fee among other charges from developers adding that failure on the part of developers to pay the said amount often results in their properties being destroyed. Solomon Dakokwam noted that henceforth digging fees have been abolished in the Gumwa Eastern Cliff and the same applies to land guard activities. The DC says the abolishment of the said charges and activities of land guards will bring more investors to the area, the urging developers to pay digging fee once to the owners of the land. The DC cautioned land guards and their employers to with immediate effect seize all operations as they will be dealt with ruthlessly as the anti-vigilantism law stipulates should they continue to operate. Meanwhile, developers have been admonished to seek permits from the assembly before carrying out any development. This, according to the DC, will aid monitoring by a special tax force formed against land guard activities as it will be mandated of the tax force to patrol sites of projects with permit from the assembly to ward off these guards. Here is the district chief executive for Gomwa East, Solomon Dakokwam, speaking to City News. Over the four-year existence of the Gomwa East District Assembly, it has received myriad of complaints from inhabitants and the general public about the activities of land guards in the district contrary to the provisions in the law referred here to. I am happy this morning to inform you and the general public that from today, Monday 19th September 2022, the District Security Council DISEC of the Gomwa East District Assembly, in collaboration with the chiefs and elders of the district, have with immediate effect Well, the Land Act of 2000, Act 1036, mm. makes it a criminal offense punishable by law to engage the services of Langards yes. and also to engage in activities of Langardism, in quote. So clearly, it is an outlawed operation or so activity you're not already. Saying that you're now banning exactly, it that is where I have a problem with the <laughs> DC. For maybe the, this, is to, East. this is to officially tell the residents or people in the community or the municipality that you know what, if you should get someone in your uh, area or on your premises and the mm. person claims to be a land guard and the person wants to take digging fee from you or the person wants to take mm. an amount of money from you, uh, just let the person know that this is out has been outlawed and for that reason you can't give the person mm. any amount of money the person is demanded for so i think it's, it's, it's to drum home 
uh, more information to the residents and the municipalities. Like, you know what? Well, uh, Philip, don't allow if, these if people want to, to come do, into your, to your there's premises. There's no proper drumming home than taking action. That's Organizing true. a press conference to reiterate or to mention to us that you are banning Langard's uh, activities of Langard really does well, not from, from, from change what, anything from, 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 from what the MCE said or what is mm -hmm. being said from the assembly. They have come into connections with the chiefs and all that. And you know, mm. this is not this is what uh, public knowledge that whether Langad is him or you definitely have a traditional authority uh, fueling it or behind it and tell the individuals that you know well, what. It's only go, an, an allegation who, who we cannot yes. really prove. Yeah. So that's what, that's what I'm saying. People 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 have it at the back of their mind that this is mostly um, you have chiefs involved mm. in these things because these lands custodial owners will be like for the chiefs mm. and all that. Right. So if you're having people coming to your premises and tell you that you have to pay digging fee and all that, you would have to pay that amount. Of, but this is coming from the assembly mm. that, you know what, this has been outlawed, it's been banned in the municipality, and mm. that you shouldn't even entertain these individuals in the first place, thought of even giving them money. Mm. That is their digging fee or paying additional money after buying the land and all that. Right. Well, to be fair, yeah. we must commend, uh, I mean, the, the, the Gomwa DC and then, of course, the other assemblies around that area, as well as the police service, because mm. mm. in recent times we've heard of a number of arrests of people uh, suspected to be Langards. What we do not know is what has become of, of, of the arrest and whatever prosecutions are being undertaken. But like I'm saying, the act itself has been outlawed oh, Lord, by yes. the laws of the land. And so take action. Don't organize press conference and I come and tell us that you've banned something that <laughs> is banned by law. <laughs> that is where I, I, I am lost. That's Unless, true. of course, he's uh, a more of an authority than the law of Ghana. Maybe uh, a lot I, I of times it's more of an education and it's more of trying to tell the residents, you know what, you this, know, this, you this, take this, action. this, 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 I'm informing you. Take action. I'm sure the action will come. Take action. The action will come. MC, and if you can't catch the action. people, catch the owners of the lands they are protecting. Mm, mm, yes, because mm. they would have, the land guy would not be somewhere and just wake up that yes. there's a bare land somewhere, I'm going to sit on it and protect it. Mm, mm, mm. An owner of a land will engage the services of a landlord. But you Catch see, the owner this landlord land thing is it's more prevalent in areas that you would have uh, not yet developed. Exactly. Developing, communities, Developing communities, let me put right. it that the way. New areas yes, that are new springing areas. up. So, uh, I think the Gumwa area is also yeah. developing. Yeah. People are now moving to that side. Mm. So the MC wants to put that into the heads of people who are mm. buying land, the landowners and all that. So just pay attention to that and it's a form of education. But before it's asking the MC <laughs> to take action. We need action, not words. More action, less words. All right, you're watching CNR Extra here on CTTV, still ahead. As a Mampon District Court adjourns case involving six students of the KNUST, uh, standing trial for allegedly gang raping a first year female student to the 27th of September. We'll be right back with the details. Stay with us. Welcome back. This is CNR Extra on City TV. Let's now take you to the Ashanti region. Uh, recently, we heard of two separate uh, incidents of alleged rape on the campus or, or, or involving students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Let's bring you an update on how that case uh, is progressing. The Asakari Mampon District Court in the Ashanti region has adjourned to 27th of September 2022 the case involving six students of the KNUST who were standing trial for allegedly gang raping a first year female student. Now, the court has also adjourned another alleged rape case in which an interdicted police officer and a final year student of KNUST are being accused of gang raping a student. On the same date, this is due to the unavailability of the magistrate presiding over the matter who has embarked on his annual leave. Now, the two separate cases were reported to the police in July this year. The interdicted police officer and the final year student in their case have been granted bail by the Kumasi High Court. The six students who are standing trial for gang raping another student are still on Well, two separate cases of alleged rape involving students of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. One involving six students, the mm -hmm. other a student and a police, police officer. officer. Now, these I mean, suspects have been left frustrated because uh, the, the magistrate presiding over the case has embarked on his annual <laughs> leave. Well, we hear the case has been adjourned to September 27. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll see how it, it progresses, but then there are some differences between the two cases because for the six, uh, they are still on, uh, on, on remand. 
Okay. But for the individual student and the police officer, they have been granted bail. Mm. And, and, and this is what uh, we will say that at least if the case is being heard on the 27th, mm. whatever comes out of it, if the, uh, the, the sentencing and also the judgment that is going to come out of it, mm. I think it should be expedited so that the students on campus who are also harboring thoughts of these things mm. will now get it off their mind. Because I'll be asking myself why two cases are in line with rape mm. case yeah and what is exactly hap what, what is happening on that campus and what is mm. really the situation so i think that if if 27 there mm. if i'm not going to say the magistrate to come from leave and come in, <laughs> making sure that the case goes on but all what is needed mm. for the case to be carried yeah. out for a finality mm. to be brought to it i think it should be done so that right uh, prosecution yes. should gather their facts yes. prevent the facts as it is argue out the case and let's get to the end, end of, of it case. because yes. we are not sure if this is some new craze on the university campus but uh, if it's brought to an end and some proper punishment meted out to uh, the suspects upon conviction of course it will serve as a deterrent uh, to others. Let's still stay in the Ashanti region, this time in the capital, Kumase, uh, where the new prices of sachet and bottled water is really having a toll on retailers and wholesalers. And following the increment in the prices of sachet and bottled water, some stakeholders in the value chain have begun lamenting the impact the highs have, are having on their businesses because of a drastic reduction in sales. Now, the wholesalers, retailers and hawkers have joined calls by members of the general public for the decision to be reconsidered since they believe that the increment will worsen the current economic situation in the country. City News' Mid Middle Belt Bureau Chief Edward Upon Marfo reports. City News checks in Kumasi show that wholesalers, retailers and hawkers have started adjusting their prices following recommendations by the National Association of Sachet and Packaged Water Producers. With sachet water, for instance, wholesome hawkers and shop owners sell a piece at 50 pesos, others sell at 40 pesos. Wholesale and retail prices have all been adjusted accordingly. Based on a release by the National Association of Sachet and Packaged Water Producers, effective 19 September 2022, one sachet water should be sold at 50 pesos while a bag of sachet water should be sold at seven Ghana cities from the retail tracks. The association further recommended that 500 ml ice bottled water should be retailed at two Ghana cities and the 750 ml ice bottled water or the medium size be retailed at three Ghana cities. Although there has been few hours following the implementation of the Apple review of the prices, it appears some persons along the value chain are feeling its negative impact. Some wholesalers in Kumasi tell City News they're losing customers due to the adjustment in prices. One of the wholesalers, Grace Asaribuati, for instance, says she and her colleagues have already started feeling the negative impact of the upward adjustment. Currently, I think uh, due to the increments of the prices, things are you know, it has even made sales go down because people are now adjusting to the new prices. And then looking at it, uh, our bottled water, I think the increment has been almost um, 1.5, that is said is increment. Some are even two cities, depending on the product and then the brand that we are selling. You know, and then because we are even at the raining season, it's not even helping us because normally the increment normally comes around the high season that is getting to December. But as at now, because of the increment and then it's also raining, so that you know, ever since you go here, you've seen this, there has not been anybody here. But before, there will be people here picking the things up and down because of the increments and then the rain too. It doesn't even match. She says their businesses have been badly affected because various items, aside from water, have also had upward adjustments in recent days. All the products, I will tell you, all the products, all the products have seen increments. Everything. I think we have um, Puka, then we used to sell it around 24, 25, now it's 27. With the can Lucuzade, the Lucuzade, so we used to sell it around 120, now it's around 150, 160. For the pack. For the pack, yes. Yeah. So there have been massive increments, especially when it comes to the cans. You know, with Malta Guinness, 
Um, then we used to sell it around 90 something. But then recently, because of the increments, we are now being forced to sell it around 105. Because it's been given to us 100 cities. And there's nothing you can do than to sell it 105. Yes. It appears more persons are feeling the impact as some people who take care of shops and who pack sachet and bottled water, among other items people buy, are also complaining. Richard Abwaje is one of them. Kaiser at 18 cities, and maybe the person will give you an amount of 20 cities. So it will be left at two cities. You can say, oh, take the two cities. And by now, the, it is up to 20 cities. So when that person gives you the 20 cities, you won't get any like, tips from it. So it's making the work hard. Maybe I'll be, I'll be paid at an amount of 600 cities a month. And coming here every day without any tips, it's made the work difficult for us. Yes, yeah, so now the system has been too hard for us. Some street hawkers in Kumase who interacted with Sit News on Monday morning called on the relevant authorities to reconsider the decision to increase the prices because people are not patronizing as they used to. Your business now say first now so now can twenty pesos. So you say almost it at forty pesos. I'm not what to do money yesterday. I want to some money. You have found you thirty pesos now. Say business now say. They say drink a crowd also or be on top. See your best dress or more to tin your man or some money yesterday. No, now I'm looking at the TV. So you find you fifty pesos. So fifty pesos are here and caught near the above fourteen yesterday. Oh, me and find your border down. Yeah, yesterday or more. I want to some money. As a man from Tos, those why a channel. I chop and buy a chair. Means when you answer, and so how far me the buyer and call it. Drink a bacon, cran, why at a more moody shone banner. I saw more too soon. I caught them, no more so on your gas near Yakakra. I mean, this kind of uh, events were expected to happen. Uh, recall the last time there was an increment, uh, some of the retailers uh, had to go back to the previous price yeah, because yeah. really patronage was very low. And it looks like that is what is happening again. You know, but you cannot it, it, blame mm -hmm. the manufacturers and producers too much. But because it, they it also will, have to... It will take some time before people mm -hmm. would understand that, okay, so there is an increment to 50 yeah. pesos because I wouldn't uh, have the back of my mind I could buy this for 30 pesos and I'm now buying 50 pesos. 50 pesos. And if I'm supposed to take, uh, say, 10 in a day, mm -hmm. that's five Ghana cities. You understand? Mm. So uh, it's going to take some time before the consumer will now understand that, okay, so the price has increased from 30 pesos to some 50 pesos. But I also side with the traders as well that if something could be done about it mm. for the price to be uh, reduced, i.e. the materials they are using and all that mm. in the production of the sachet water could be reduced, the prices could be reduced, right. this can also help in their business as well. Right. Uh, my issue is, I mean, other uh, sectors or manufacturers are regulated, mm. but it looks like these sachet water and uh, bottled water producers are not. So, I mean, they determine their prices on their own yes. without any state intervention, and consumers are left to buy at the prices determined by the manufacturers. But when you, I, I'm when not you not spoke sure to how, their how president, uh, Mr. Uh, Nunu, no, no. yeah, he mm. said that well, the consideration or the suggestion is that we mm. can increase it to 50 per sweat, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to increase it to 50 per sweat. So then why so then the so, that so, uh, so he, he said that the, the increment is 50 per sweat, uh -huh. but he could still sell it at 40 per sweat. And still make profit. And, and, still, and still make profit. But well, you don't go beyond right. the 50 per sweat uh, price. Let's hope the yes. retailers are able to do that and still... Uh, make enough to take home at the end of the day. You're watching CNR Extra, still to come. About 40 drivers convicted and fined and uh, City TV's war against indiscipline campaign. Stay with us for the details. Welcome back. This is CNR Extra on City TV. Now, the war against indiscipline campaign is back so far some 110 vehicles have been impounded and over 40 drivers convicted and fined 40 drivers have been convicted and fined various sums of monies ranging from 300 cities to 3,000 Ghana cities since the commencement of City TV's war against indiscipline. So far, about 110 vehicles have been impounded for various road traffic offenses. Key among the offenses is the illegal U-turns on the Tema motorway. 
Now, seven vehicles were stopped when the war against indiscipline team mounted a snap check on the Tema motorway, while four other drivers were arrested at the East Lagos underbridge. The drivers have been explaining their reasons for the continuous use of the unauthorized turns on the motorway. War against indiscipline has just started this morning. It's a Monday morning and the time check is around 7.20 a.m. And so far, various cars or vehicles are literally turning the tow boot to the attaining point where they now make an approved U-turn and join the Tema bound side of the motorway. Some of the vehicles have been impounded already. One here using strobe lights and he's indicating that he, it was on it before he bought it. There are other vehicles that were impounded. There is a white man also there who actually admitted to the offence of doing unauthorized or unapproved U-turn on the motorway. Today, because of the small emergency, that's why I did that. So you were in a hurry to take your wife to Yeah. That's what I was saying to... Uh, she's the one even calling me, man. Where is she? At, at the house, at Spintex. So there's nobody in the car? No, no, she's not. I'm going to take her. No, 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 then, then you, I, I don't think you can go with the car. <laughs> what? I don't think you can go with this car. I know, they told me already. But I cannot get a taxi from here to go. That's what my problem also. Because I'm in a hurry to go. So. Where do you reside? Where? Where do you live? At Spintex. Is it because of the hotel I need to see you? That's good you do that. Yeah, I'm not feeling well. And that's I think I should need to have slots for us. The so maybe the, the medical the medical personnel so that we have emergencies. We, have to, we don't have to go and queue way uh, you know to the how do you call that crown or we go before you come and do a U-turn. Do you know it's, it's, do you know do you know if you are running emergency, do you don't use your private car? Uh, I mean there's no structure like that in the so, system. You can't get any, any, you can't get such, such treatment. But is there something that can be made for if, do, do you, Does your hospital have a, a vehicle, official vehicle, that can really convey doctors and stuff like that? No, uh, we don't have official vehicles. Uh, which hospital is this? New Crystal. What? New Crystal Hospital. Because of the, 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 the emergency that you are to attend to, that is why we are allowing you to go with your vehicle. You will be processed to appear before court tomorrow morning. Please, with all respect, ensure to be at the court tomorrow morning. I'm going to my lunch is my lunch. I'm going to 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 my lunch. I can call someone to go to I forgot. Where, where do you reside? It's legal. So, so I do. The person will do your lunch for this thing. Yes, for my agenda now. Long since I came to this, I brought my uncle because my uncle is going to do a training at Tema, at the port. So he asked me to do the U-turn here. So, according to my uncle, he said usually he tips them like what, or, or, or chow my dear, uh -huh, for where, for where they are standing. Oh, no, they are five cities now. Yeah, based on where they are standing. five cities. The police is here to pick up this gentleman who usually opened the barrier here for motorists to make a U-turn. Stationed himself here in the morning, opened the barrier for drivers to use, and they tip him. Some say they give him five cities, some say they give him ten cities, depending on what they have at hand. About seven vehicles impounded this morning were all brought to the Okwebono District Police Headquarters here on the Spinter Strait, and it will be kept here until their cases are determined in the La motor court. I just use the, the vehicle insurance information checking. You can check it on the MID yourself. I'm saying that this woman gave me this car, and the person is not even in Ghana right now. Fine, but I'm just saying that when you stop, look at people looking at me. Please, my office is here. Can we go? To, please, can no? I can't do that. Please don't. Boys, please. Can you just like have a seat and we talk about this? Because I can't do this. Fine, please have a seat. No, please come. You don't worry. I'm very good with turning and everything.
Boss, I understand, but I'm just saying that I can't like look at the way you look at how everybody is looking at me. You said you are with Bank of Ghana. Fair enough. Yes, sir. I know that sometimes with this your bullion van, you are allowed to use sari. Yes. But this one, you are not carrying any money. You're only taking the car to the office. To the, to, so, oh, so, so, yes. So why do you need to use sari? Because I have to. You have to do what? Your, your driver's license, please. Is there where Bank of Ghana? Yes, sir. Your driver's license? Uh, actually, it's at the office. Sir. I'm going to impound your vehicle for misuse of sari. Oh, Tomorrow, yeah. you'll be put before court. From court, then you come for the vehicle. Yes. Once you can't, you can't convince us the reason why you are using the sari. There's no emergency. Yes, sir. Yes, convince me. Why are you using sari? Uh, because I have to take the car. No, that's not an excuse. Uh, it's not an emergency. You are only sending the vehicle to your office. Yeah. It doesn't mean you use you, sir. That's misuse of the sari. Because of that, Mr. Who? Uh, my name is AJ. Mr. J, you'll be yes. put before court tomorrow morning. The war against indiscipline is not necessarily to take delight in impounding vehicles, arresting drivers here and there, and probably causing them some sort of discomfort. Essentially, today, we want to rather uh, take a different twist to this whole thing by educating the motoring public as to what the motorway is all about. When we say motorway, what are the do's and don'ts on the motorway? With reference to our motorway, that's from Tema to Accra, it has been constructed in such a way that we did not give any way for the making of u turn Therefore, any u turn that you come across on the motorway it's an unauthorized path created by people who I think they have their own ways of doing things. In effect, they don't actually want the purpose for which the motorway was constructed to be put to use. Each and every Ghanaian must be part of the war against indiscipline. It is now time for the educational institutions, the religious institutions and others to also come on board. I think it's time that we also bring aboard uh, road safety issues whereby the educational institutions will also compete. You know, we must also have a, a, a national agenda towards road with. My name is Fred Duho reporting for City News. Well, it's very important that uh, we, we make it clear that no one is out to get anyone deliberately to embarrass the person. We're just trying to ensure safety and some discipline on our roads. Uh, the Y campaign, War Against Indiscipline campaign, only resumed, what, just about a week ago. Mm, mm. Uh, it's been to just about four different road networks in the capital, just in Accra, and already 110 vehicles have been impounded. This should tell you that we are... Uh, really having a lot of indisciplined uh, motorists or drivers on our roads. So this mm -hmm. should also serve as a warning to others who haven't yet felt the heat of this uh, war against mm -hmm. indiscipline program or initiative. I think that when you are driving on the stretch, you should just be careful. For instance, mm -hmm. you would be driving on a road and you notice that just in front of you is a vehicle that is driving at a very slow pace. Mm -hmm. When it's about to the traffic light is about to on yellow mm -hmm. or amber, then you see that the driver speeds, speeds up yeah. to yeah. cross. And what I understand from the police mm -hmm. is that when it's about, when it's even on as amber, you should stop. Exactly. Because Perhaps we should yes, get the exactly. MTTD in studio one day to, to do a proper education of all, of all of these. But one thing I have observed and uh, would like to comment about is, you see, that there's prevention, mm. right? So maybe, maybe, I don't know if it falls within their, uh, uh, I mean, brackets or whatever uh, uh, matching orders they have for the operation. Mm. But maybe they should make themselves visible enough at the front of the U-turn so that people see them and they do they not make it the U -turn, yes. at all. Rather than staying on the other side for people to make their U-turn so and get arrested. Yes. Because you see, if it's a danger we're trying to prevent and we're waiting for the person to make their U-turn, it does not stop the danger mm, in mm, any way. Mm. What if I make the U-turn uh, and I'm smashed uncommon, into or I smash yeah. into another uh, vehicle? vehicle you yes. understand? So maybe we should stop the crime from happening 
then that will be the education bit. But uh, to for, this also brings to bear that most of most of the drivers on our roads, we need refresher courses. <laughs> yes. You need to know what exactly this means mm. because you would notice that there is a U-turn that you want to do it, but if it's not an appropriate U-turn and you do it, you, you've, you've, you've flouted a mm. law. So you need refresher courses to know the various signs, mm. what this means and what that means. People just go in, get the license and just drive on the various roads. So yeah, but I think I, this, I mean, this, this also helps to ensure that people the design, do the right thing. Per the, the design roads. of the Accra Tema Motorway, there is no U-10 on it. But I'm not even speaking so, for the Accra yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying, So if you well. make a U-10 on the Accra Tema yes. Motorway, it is illegal <laughs> and you will be picked up. Well, that's it for today. This is how we draw the curtain on our show. Many thanks to you, Philip Nilati. Always a pleasure having you on the show. And of course, super, super, super thanks to you out there for making time uh, to join us for the show. My name is Nanatufu Boate. Have a great day. <laughs>